All right, so picking up here where I left off in the last video. This is what we have so far. We've got the trigger volume, which is uh, activated when the player begins to walk into the trigger. We have this door movement timeline, which will allow us. It doesn't allow us just yet because we haven't finished setting it up, but it'll allow us to actually make the door move from a position A to a position B. And then we have this set relative location, which takes the door and sets a new location for it. We're going to be using this to set our, uh, basically, where it moves to. So if I go over here, this is its current location, which is this guy right here. If I move it here, that's eventually going to be our new location down here. Okay? And we can actually go ahead and input that. And we can do that pretty easily. So let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to go to door movement. I'm going to open that guy up. And what we're going to see is that we get the secret menu. So if we go back to the event graph, if you double click this guy, for example, nothing happens. If I double click this guy, nothing happens. See what happens if I double click on alert. Nothing happens. But when you double click on a door movement node, we get this menu. So some of these nodes can be um, drilled into. You can double click them, open them up, and dig inside of them and find more options, more menus, more tools, and stuff like that. Timelines are great because timelines allow you to change the value of something over time. And it can be the color of something, it can be its location, it can be an arbitrary number. Okay, So right now it's empty. If we go to the top left, we have these four buttons. So we can create a float track, which is basically uh, numbers with decimal points. So it could be uh, a bunch of numbers like 256.02. That's a float. Um, you can also do a vector track. And I just talked about vectors in a previous video. As a refresher, a vector is coordinates in 3D space, x, y, and z. Basically, the position of something. Okay. Uh, we can also place an event track and we can place a color track if we were going to go ahead and change the color of something like let's say a light or our sunlight, something like that. And I've used that before, it's pretty cool. So what I want to do is right now we're working with vectors, right? The position of the object. We need this door to move and right now it I moved it to the wrong spot. Let me set that back to zero so it resets. Okay. So we know that we need to move the door using vectors. Knowing that, I'm going to dig in here and I'm going to choose a vector track. And uh, you can rename the vector track. So let's call this uh, door track. Okay. Makes it pretty simple. All right. We know that if we go back to components and we grab the door, we know we need to move it in the Z axis because Z is up and down. If we move it to about right here, let's look at this. That looks pretty good. I think that'll be good enough so that our player can clear it and just walk right over it. And um, I think that would work. Now, if I look over here in the location, you could see that we're at negative 300. That sounds like it's a pretty good value. So if we move the door down 300 Unreal units, it opens up enough for our player to walk on through and you know, walk out into space out of the space station and get sucked out into the vacuum of space. Don't know why they would want to do that, but whatever. So let me go back to the graph over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, graph here to basically plot some points. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a point, and that's pretty easy to do. Hold down Shift and left click, and you'll create a point. Now I can take this point and I can actually move it around. I can click and drag on it with the left mouse button. Now you notice that we have two numbers up here, and they may be a little bit hard to see. That's just the way the UI is, but um, just bear with me here. We basically have a point, which is index 0. See that? This is point zero. I know it's one point, the first point. You probably think it's index one, but in programmer language, the first item in an array is always 
uh, zero. The second one is one. The third one is two. That's just the way it works. Anyway, getting off topic there. Um, this first number represents the time. So basically, what we have is values that go up and down, and then time from left to right. So at zero seconds, or at the beginning of our timeline, I'm going to place this guy over here. So I'm going to place. I'm going to type in zero for the first number. And for the value, which is right now negative. 0 0.22 I'm gonna put 0 so basically at the very beginning of our timeline we're at 0 and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift click another node over here and um, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to right now our timeline runs to 5 seconds the length is 5 I'm gonna set that to 2 so it's shorter I'm gonna take this point here I'm gonna place it at 2 in the timeline and I'm gonna set the value for it to 1 so basically think of it as going from 0 to 100 percent 100 percent is the completed state alright so if I click these little arrow icons here I could frame in on the whole thing which is pretty cool I can also right click on it and get some more options about how I want to interpolate this stuff but let's not worry about that for now now if you notice, that guy's the x-axis. I'm going to go ahead and check these guys over here on the left. What you can do is you can check these guys over here so you can control which axis you're using. So by default, it was set to x. And I just set the x to move, which basically means that this door is going to move this way, which is not exactly what we want, right? It's not what we want at all. I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to take this point and I'm going to delete it and I'm going to choose the z-axis so now we get this blue line I'm going to go, go ahead and hold down shift and click out here select that point I'm going to set this to now we did say that we needed to move this to a value of negative 300 so I'm going to type in 300 instead and I'm going to set this to a 2 oh, I'm sorry this is the time over here so this is two seconds and this one should be negative 300 or I think I typed in 200 okay I'm gonna hit these buttons to frame in on this don't wanna frame in on that one point I wanna frame in on the whole thing now I forgot to make a point at the beginning so I'm gonna come over here create a point there I'm gonna set that at 0 and 0 Okay. Now if I look at the green, and if I right click and drag and move around this little graph, but the green line should be straight and the red line should be straight. The blue one should be the only one that goes to negative 300. All right, cool. So we're done with that. We're not going to check on any of these options up here. We don't need to. Okay, so now we have this door track right here and it has a new vector. What I'm going to do is take this guy and I'm going to set that new vector over here. So it now has a new location. But if we play this, if I compile this and we jump in here and we play, we're going to notice that something really weird happens. See this? The door is already open. It's open at the correct position. It's negative 300 units down but it opened automatically before anything could happen okay and that's because we set this uh, new location which is not going to be not going to work out the way that we want it to so I'm going to take this guy here I'm going to plug that into play I'm going to take this guy here I'm going to plug that into the set relative location and if you think about it this looks like it might work here's the trigger when we step in the trigger we're gonna play this guy uh, if we look at this it's gonna play from basically position 0 all the way to negative 300 over the course of two seconds and that's gonna update and send that information to the set relative location node and here's the new location so Maybe that'll work. That sounds like it would work. 
Maybe. I don't know. But when I play this, it's not working at all. In fact, something really weird happens, where when we start the game, the door is already in the open position, and we, when we walk in the trigger, the door pops to the closed position, and then opens up again. Well, now it broke. Now it's not even doing that anymore. So, something's going wrong. And it's pretty common to run into issues like this when you're using Blueprint, uh, especially early on. And when you're prototyping stuff, even if you're like a, a pro veteran blueprint person, you're always going to try to create something new. You're, you, you will end up in a situation where you're creating something new for the first time and you're kind of confused. You're not really sure about what goes with what and you're kind of experimenting. And that's going to happen a lot. Don't worry. That's actually perfectly normal. All right. Uh, everyone goes through that. Even the guys that work at Epic Games that you know, created this engine, even when they're doing something totally new with Blueprint, they have to kind of go in and kind of experiment and use their best judgment to figure out uh, what nodes work with what. So, okay, what is the problem here? Well, the um, problem is I set this guy at negative 300, so I'm going to set this back up to zero. That's kind of that's that's one problem right there, user error. So I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna go back to the graph. The problem is when we walk into the trigger, uh, the door is moving. It's moving to a new location and uh, it is updating. So if I go back here, open this, door's closed, and I walk into it, it actually opens and uh, then it closes or it opens I should say and that's it it just opens which is pretty cool because that works perfectly fine all right now um, that's working pretty good so what we need to do is we need to tell unreal all right cool you open the door what I need you to do now is I need you to close the door when I walk away from the trigger volley, all right? So we're probably gonna need another one of these guys, but one that activates the uh, when you walk out, because this one right now activates when you walk into the trigger. We need one to activate when you walk out of the trigger in order to close our door, okay? So uh, how do we do that? Pretty simple. What we're gonna do is we'll select the trigger volume again. We'll right click. We'll go to the add event for trigger volume that Unreal is recommending to us. We'll go to collision and here's the begin overlap. This is the one that we used the first time which is this one up here. Now we're going to use the opposite of that one which is the end overlap. So begin overlap end overlap is the opposite. I'll click on that. That's going to create this event and this event is the end overlap and what that means is Check this out. I'm going to go ahead and plug in a print string. And I'm going to rename this and say, uh, you have exited the zone. I can't think of anything better to say, so I'm just going to say this. I'm going to compile the code, F7 again. Save this real quick. I'm going to jump back into the map, jump in. When I step into the trigger, I know it works because the door opens. When I step back out, oh, there's the message. You have exited the zone. I'm going to step in, step out. There it is. Every time I step out of that uh, trigger, that message goes off. All right, so we know that this stuff is working. So now that we know it's working, we're going to delete this print string. And what we're going to do is we're going to start telling Unreal to do stuff when we uh, walk out of the trigger. Now we could create another door movement node and this time uh, make it so that it moves from negative 300 to zero, basically reverse. But there's a faster and easier way of doing this. And that faster and easier way is as simple as this. I can take this guy and connect it to this reverse input and basically what that's going to do is when I walk into the trigger the door opens. 
when I walk out, it'll reverse itself, which uh, is pretty cool. Okay, so let's um, let's see if this actually works. Not really sure if it will, but we're gonna find out. We're gonna walk into the trigger, door opens. I'm gonna walk out, door closes. Walk in, door opens. Walk out, it closes. Pretty cool. I can play around with the door. Maybe it'll break, and then whoever owns this space station is gonna be really, really angry with me because I just broke a door that cost $75,000 to replace. All right, pretty cool. All right, so we got that working, but the behavior is a little bit funny, so we're gonna see about tweaking that stuff and fixing it up uh, in the next video.